All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with the Fully Nuking Podcast. No, this is not Jordan Verney. This <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> this is the infamous Hags, lifelong friend. When did I meet you? Well, I mean, I, I knew your dad had a few boys. Um, you know, your dad, your grandmom had a place in Avalon. Big Avalon guy. Yeah, I mean, I knew your dad, but I knew your Aunt Jody um, and Aunt Karen the best. Um, they were there. They had some kids there. But um, anyway, I guess, like, I mean, I knew you were doing contests, and then I think it was, like, one Easter, my brother-in-law, my niece, and I were in Sebastian Inlet in the parking lot, and my brother was like, hey, man, that looks like Rob Grafe. And I was like, no way, from Avalon? He goes, yeah. And then I was like, that's got to be. That's Ben. How many years? I, I think it was so five. So how many years between, like, the last time you saw my dad and then that time? Oh, man. That's, I mean, your dad was such a legend in Avalon, from what I've been told. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> even on this trip back, like, you know, I kind of have to, like, explain. People think your last name's Gravy, dude. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. It is, though. No, no, but it is. But then it's, like, <laughs> when you have to explain to people that, like, own surf shops or other merchants <clears throat> or friends. Um, because everyone knew your aunt, Karen. Yeah. So once you name dropped that. Um, but anyway, you know, you, 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 you tell the story and, um, I want to say with your dad, I mean, I don't even know, dude. Is at least like it, 15 years. At least. At I want to say maybe closer to 20. Um, so yeah, it, it was 05. And the reason I remember it, cause I remember meeting you and first of all, you walked up to me, you go, Ben Grave. And I was not used to people knowing who I was back then. I was like, this guy's weird, dude. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, though, I made the open men's final. Right, you were there for the NSSAs, right? Yeah. The East Coast champs. And you were my good luck charm because you got me into the final. I remember the repertoire charts. He, I did, I needed like a five, and I got a five point one zero in the last ten seconds of the heat. From that point on, right, you were the good luck. But I got fourth in the final, so. Well, knowing that now, I mean, it feels great. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure to put on someone, <laughs> you know. Like, well, dude. No, but then you know, let's Easterns were hard yeah, though. But let's stick with the Eastern vibe for a little while, and then a couple years later, you were in a you were in a maxed out division there, weren't you? What was it? That the East East Coast NSSAs, right? You had yeah. all those players oh, dude, in yeah. you, right? Oh well, like that's... what was the crew? What was the rundown? Just well, guys. that year that I made the Open Men's Final, it was Eric Geiselman won it, um, Jesse Heilman second, Chris Wernicke third, me fourth, Wesley Toth fifth, and. Maybe Cody Thompson. Maybe. Oh, Jensen. Jensen was in it. Jensen Cal Calloway. Calloway. Right. But also, like, Cody Thompson was surfing it. Um, dude, it, Dylan Graves, Brian Toth, like, Sterling Spencer, Brian, Tommy O'Brien. Dude, it was gnarly. It was gnarly. And then nationals don't even start, bro. <laughs> well, I mean, you had your work cut out for you. I mean, whew, I couldn't even imagine at that level. Making a final back then was like... You deserved a parade when you got home. Yeah, but, you know, and, and, you know, and those guys, you've remained friends with most of those guys, whether oh, yeah. it be it through social media or, in, you know, in your extensive travels. Or real life. Right. Extensive travels. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Food, food land over there. In what, <laughs> how, right? Yeah. North Shore. Um, totally. So, uh, um, I didn't quite get to finish Hag's intro. Um, is that, that's where you go by, Hag's? I mean... As far as like where we're at right now in this county, yeah, yeah. How do you spell it? H a g g z. Okay, good, because that's how it's in my phone. Um, but Hags is the encyclopedia of surfing. He, when I was a kid, it was the guy that would sit in my garage when me and my older brother were doing beer bongs and just look at us and be like, just laughing his ass off, like, "What's wrong with these guys? Why are they doing this?" But well, at the same time, understand. Well, it was, well, was kind of like a spring break, whether it was actually <laughs> in March or December. You know, you guys brought it hard, and you know, and I, you know, as a, as a senior uh, of the people in the room, you know, I, I mean, I, I would conservatively do a beer bong just to be cool, but I wasn't doing multiples. No and, matter what month of the year we came down, it was it, spring break. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I sprung up Classic. there from Vero Beach. <laughs> you guys were already posted up, and yeah. uh, it was always a good time. Um, Sebastian Inlet Sessions back then, dude. Did you remember? Do you remember your legendary line off the end of the jetty in the beginning of the Nub DVD? What? Something about a dolphin? You were like, <laughs> 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 we're down here <laughs> at Sebastian Inlet with former USA team member Ben Grave. As I look over oh. the water, I see a pie. Yeah, pie. Go! 
go. Right. Yeah, that is There's I, a guy down here that might be riding for Quicksilver. Right. <laughs> uh, no, but, um, those yeah, were good days. I do remember that, you know, and that was kind of cool, you know, because I needed it too. Like Vero doesn't get a lot of waves. You yeah. Know? You got to run up the road a little bit. You, you like that peak at Sebastian Lent and. I mean, who doesn't? So, um, yeah, it's always fun. And then we do some filming, so it's fun, too, you know, as, you, as you've as gone into this phase of your vlogging. Yeah. Um, those those things were kind of just off the cuff. Yeah. Um, so, Hags has helped me out with a bunch of filming. Central Florida, whenever we're around, just hanging out. El Dumpo. But uh, this is what this is one of the specific things that I, that I wanted to highlight. When I was a kid, I, I was obviously just brain dead. I was just, like didn't know what was going on you're a teenager i didn't care about surfing history and you would just come over and start rifling off information dude you probably know more about surfing than almost anyone i know which is crazy you would just say a name and just go yeah and that's that's <laughs> kind of good because you know I, I can't remember what i had for dinner last night <laughs> or what clothes i have on yesterday but it's like I, it's something i and i you know i i owe it all to like surfer magazine and surfing magazine Big and reader. It, yeah, and I owe it to the fact that I could sit in a classroom and read Surfer Mag and not pay attention to a lecture and then <laughs> still do good on a quiz or a test, <laughs> and it would drive my teachers crazy. <laughs> so what like, what do you read now that there's no magazines? I mean, there's electronic versions of pretty much everything now. Yeah. But it seems like everyone kind of covers the same story. Well, you know? um, have you noticed like the it's more of a clickbait factor nowadays than it, than it is like a uh, – in-depth story they're kind of going for the title yeah and it, you know and they're just paying attention to the you know the the notion that people only have like 10 or 15 seconds of attention span with a lot of these apps or what they're reading yeah. so it's they're just being volumized by every which way so um you know you just find a <clears your> way <throat> you know but i i read a lot of just like i hate to say it news um but it's more world news i try to yeah keep it simple yeah i don't watch the news at all um but sports information, whether it's the major sports or surfing, everything in between, I just always had a knack for that. What's your other like sport go to? Uh, baseball. Who's your team? The Phillies. Yeah, the Phillies. Got to be sure. right. Yeah. And I, I went. I went to a Sixers game this year. Yeah, and I like that. Yeah, I like that squad. I mean, they're good. Yeah, I yeah. don't know anything about it. I was um, for the first half of the first quarter. I was rooting for the other team. Oh, is that right? I didn't know who was who. Oh, you didn't realize that the team that said Phila. <laughs> Sixers. All right, here's what happened. They I mean, both, so the visiting team was like L.A. Clippers, maybe. Is that a team? That, yeah, that's actually probably was a good matchup. You know, it was. It was and, you by know, my Paul standards, it, pretty good. Our two guys, Simmons uh, and Embiid. I mean, I, that's so great. what? Co the Clippers are blue, right? Or yellow, or white, or something like that. So anyway, however it worked out, the Sixers, uh, the Clippers was wearing the Sixers' usual colors, and then the Sixers were wearing their other color or. Some, it was something weird. So I thought the Clippers were the Sixers and the Sixers were the Clippers. Um, right. And that's kind of like how strange how they uh, they do the, the, you know, the jerseys. Yeah. Because for years it was the lighter colored was always the home team. Yeah. In any sport. <clears throat> now what is it? Now there's alternative jerseys. You can have your road jerseys at home. Yeah. Well, because that's. Because the other team wants to wear their. They jerseys, did something weird. You know, and then they have their throwback days and, you know. And Superstition, like, though, plays in. It has to, you know. But, um, I yes. mean, you were following surfing before the surfers were allowed to choose their numbers on their jerseys. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, we'd have to wait whether it was through print or, um, you know, ESPN had stuff in the summertime, uh, hot summer nights. I'm dating myself right now. On what? On TV? <laughs> ESPN. It was Corky Carroll. No way. And uh, he would have his uh, couch set up on the beach somewhere. Maybe it was just in a Hollywood basement. I have no idea, but. He would get the clips, and it was mostly like the surf movies at that time, you know, whether it was uh, Son Thompson talking about Jay Bay or Tommy Curran, you know, ripping the smooth face of <laughs> Santa Barbara as he puts it, right? <laughs> or, See, you know, that's directly from the film, guaranteed. You know, and most of the Florida focus, you know, was on um, Matt Keckley. And yeah. uh, Matt Keckley is still getting waves now. I mean, he gets great waves. Oh, he's and, out there all the time. I mean, he's the, the world's youngest, um, you know, adult, I guess you would put it, or oldest Grom, however way, yeah. way you look at it, you know? And Keck was, like, one of the original guys out there with the GoPro getting those, like, behind him, full GoPro slow-motion barrel shots, like, with the pole. Was it a pole or was it just, like, a, a spatula or something <laughs> like that? <laughs> just know? innovating. I mean, yeah, just, you know, and he just tucks himself in there, you know, and he's been doing that for a long time. Yeah. You know, and, of course, totally. you see the effect he's had on a few you know, <clears throat> guys out of Florida and... 
Well, dude, like flash back to 05, Florida was a miniature version of, of Southern California. It was the inlet, Sebastian Inlet was the lower trestles of the East Coast. Like you showed up there on any given day, there's people ripping. Photographers, ESM was on the beach like seven days a week. Yeah, and I guess that's like what's happened, you know, the, with, you know, uh, Mez and Dugan did um, as far as that. I mean, that was great to have that publication um, available, you know, just for the East Coast. Um, Surfer Mag did have like an insert back in the day where it was like East Coast Surfer. And then it would have like their other regional, whether it's photographers or writers, you know, then they would have the results. They that. would have the results for whether it's an ESA contest and an SSA con, a Chip Miller, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you can go on and on. Oh, yeah. You know well, what I mean? like, yeah, yeah, totally. Because then you would look in the back of the mag. And then I remember looking. Um, and then, like, if a contest wasn't important enough, it wouldn't be in there. And I was like, ah, oh, damn. Yeah. I won that one. But, you know, but it, it, there weren't so many contests back then. Yeah. Even in California. Well, now, know? yeah, now it's like six contests a weekend. Yeah, and, and kids are surfing five of them. <laughs> you know, um, dude, are you still doing fantasy surfer? You know, I am, but it's. Um, I mean, I had a great. Um, I came in first in a contest last year. No way! And, but it was overall. Like, well, women, yeah, and it was at, overall. I think, yeah, I think the whole at, world. Yeah, I think it was Margie's. How many? How many competitors are doing that? Like, I, how many people? I mean, as far as the female side, I think it was like. 19,000 just under 20,000. You got first? I got first. Dude, so this is why I brought it up because I, I met I screenshot it and I sent it to you. Oh, did you? Yeah, so it's in the archives. I probably just for the back archive. legend. You did. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, is... <laughs> I couldn't keep up the momentum. You know? So what do you get if you win? Uh well, you just win one event. I, I didn't get anything. I yeah, think... what if you get do you get anything if you win the whole series or no? You got to be in like a private... well, I I think there is, you know, some sort of uh you know prize but uh i'm not really in it for the prize it's just you know it's the competitive nature for the glory you know and and when you're at the men's side i mean like you can just see the matchups and you can just see that the underdog really has a a favor yeah because maybe it's his kind of wave or he's done good at that venue before or he he can sleep in his own bed you know and that makes a big difference psychological in in how these guys do it you know i just pick with my heart and that's why i suck at fantasy surfer yeah, I mean, but it's, you know, sometimes that works, too. Like, I always pick Slater. And well, it doesn't always pay off, because usually he's tier one, and it's like... Yeah. Some, he, in the last couple of years, he hasn't been really making the final series. But, dude, this is what I wanted to say. Back in the day, when YouTube first came out, so this has to be like 06, 07, you, at one point in time, were high-ranked in Fantasy Surfer globally. What was your rank? Do you remember? Well, I think it was after the first two contests in Australia. I think I was like, I want to say I was in the top 20. No, it was top 10 for oh, sure. Oh, was it top 10? Dude, it was. It was yeah, high. Yeah, because I probably sent you that screen. I think it might have been ninth. Yeah. Because I, I made a little edit about it, and I put it on YouTube, and we were just cracking up. It was All it was was a slow-mo clip of you walking down the beach, and it was oh, tags. Great. Number nine in the world at Fantasy Surfer with like punk rock in the music in the background. And then I remember some guy commented on it and he goes, who cares? <laughs> it's like, you don't get the joke. <laughs> I, or it could have been, you know, there's there, there's there's haters from was, down my neck of the woods, you know. I'm not the most simplest of persons, I'll admit. Was that, um, maybe it was the guy that was in 10th. Possibly. <laughs> right. <laughs> or the dude that's in 8th. Yeah, because he doesn't want to hear on his coattails. Yeah, it's yeah, that was fun, but it's you know, it's a really hard like I said nowadays, it's like it's really hard to to pick them cuz so many <clears> guys are good. Well, it's a kind of same thing with the tour, like you could never predict who's going to win an event because back in the day like Andy Irons would take out six events. Now it's like if you win two, you're winning a world title, like pretty much. Yeah, but at least you could keep Andy on your roster, which I pretty much did the whole time. Oh, Andy yeah. and Kelly were on my roster. Oh, yeah. Because it was a different way of picking. Exactly. And they always they always came through, but then it's like yeah. the other people have to... Because we, I think it was like money-based, right? Like you had 50 grand yeah, you had 50 to million. buy a player. Yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To buy the players. And then like Slater was $6 million or 10 and then then he started getting out outrageous and they were making them 10 mil and then you couldn't even pick a team. Right, you'd have to take, for every top guy, you'd have to take, like, four bunkus. But they're not bunkus in the sense of they freaking rip. Yeah. And well, they get it done in the heats. I know? remember remember the the big Fantasy Surfer update was freaking uh, Robo getting second place at the Bells contest in, like, do you remember what year that was? 
Do you even know what I'm talking about? I do. Right? Yeah, was yeah. that Adam Robertson? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I do know. And you got second I'm, to Parco. I'm guessing like it was probably late 1000, like 2000s. Yeah. Right? Before the 10s. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe after. Yeah, so, um, you know, I don't mean to take over the interview, but... Um, All right, hold on. One, one second. We got a problem. Going to start going. All right. Got it. There was an old old clip on there for some reason. Go ahead. Oh, I thought that was mine. Like, my my mic, the blue. Nah, we're just both on the same. But we're on. Um, we're on the dream. I lost my train of thought. Go ahead. You didn't want to take over the interview, but you are about to. I know, but I forget now what exactly I was we saying. We were talking about Robbo. We were talking about um, Sebastian Inlet. Oh, right, 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 right. So, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, just for a second, you know, I walked in and you were, you were proud to know about, um, tell me about these, uh, what do you call it, these coolers, right? Oh, here we go. I got a segue, you know. Segway, I like We're behind it. us a little bit, but uh, you know, Ben, maybe you want to break down a little bit more about this uh, this new product. Uh, there's probably a limited quantity, I would imagine, and uh, just give us a breakdown. Um, yeah, so this is for the first time ever. I have myself a signature igloo cooler. So I've been surfing for igloo for almost two years now, and within the first three months, they presented the idea of a cooler to me, and I was obviously taken back, completely surprised. Like, are you kidding? A company as legendary as igloo is gonna Go ahead and make a Ben Gravy signature cooler. Um, but they did it, and they followed through. However, we're doing limited edition because we're going to do 100 of these, and then they said they might back it up with another 100. So there might be 200 of these tops, but once they're sold, they're sold, and then we're going to wait until next year to do the next one. So pretty much that's what it is. You get the pineapple on one side, the dream van for the dream, and then fully nuking some classic tie-dye you know that's no, my style it, it really looks nice and it's shiny you know and the fact that it's igloo i mean we all know that you know the lineage on that that product exactly and now what is uh the 100 is it just like your your web page or are shops gonna have them i know you have a few shops uh, around here that kind of yeah they might open it up to shops um but yeah you pretty much you got to go to igloo coolers.com slash ben gravy and they'll be on there and they'll probably be sold out pretty soon so Let's see if that link works before I, I say any more. Yeah, but that's the idea. You want them sold out. And, you know, here that's, you know, summer's just kicking in. It's a great little thing to have. Oh, yeah. No, you know? it's it's a great cooler, dude. And it's solid. It's an igloo, bro. I know. I know. It's a legendary. Yeah, they're on here. There, there they are. Igloocoolers.com slash Ben Gravy. Congratulations on that, you know. Thanks, dude. You know, you know, and just, you know, not to again to take over, but, um, you know, I'm super proud of what you're doing, dude. You know, um, I appreciate it. Yeah, you, you put your heart into it, and um, you know, it's just great to see how you've been able to parlay things. You know. Yeah, thank you. We, we, being a few friends in Avalon, we were saying, um, you know, that you're probably the, the most famous surfer in New Jersey at this point. Whether <laughs> you want to believe it or not, or you know, it's not going to blow your head up, but it's just based on what you're able to do to reach people. Yeah. You know, it's hard. It's hard to even quantify or believe any of it for me um but you know it's weird <clears throat> sitting here talking to you like when when i was a kid flashback to those beer bong days we used to have long discussions about what surf content was going to look like in the future and i remember our main topic of discussion was never the surfing footage it was always the b-roll and it's weird because now I'm vlogging and yeah, it's, it's all B-roll. Yeah, B-roll is what makes it work. Yeah. You know, and in your stuff, it's everything's improv Yeah. You know, it's just off the cuff, you know. Very few things are staged. This is probably the most staged thing you do. Yeah. Only because this is the format. You have to do it. Like, but it's only staged because we're on a stage. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's it's no good. script, though. Right. There is no script. <laughs> all right. So we'll get back to you. I just wanted to make sure people knew about this killer killer little cooler i know? appreciate it dude and uh, you know yeah it's nice dude yeah thanks cool stoked um so what's your plan hags have you been surfing i surfed the other day actually i bought one of your boards i nice. bought it at avalon surf which that is uh in avalon new jersey um i just happened to walk by and um i saw the truck and i saw it on the side of the box BG. 
seven O B G. And what, you just had to go in there and get it? No, and I said to the guy, Scott, I was like, is that Ben Gravy? And he's like, yeah. I go, okay, cool. How many seven owns did you get? He goes, I got two. I go, well, you put one aside for me. I'll be back in like two hours tops. And you got it. Yeah, I brought the credit card back. And when I got there, the other seven O was sold and like three body boards. You got to be on it, dude. Yeah, and I was like, man, I'm glad I did that because... <laughs> Well, the, you know, he also ordered an eight footer and a nine footer, but I, you know, for me, I figured the seven footer is more. Oh yeah, you're conducive in there. to where I'm heading. You yeah, know, I'm heading to Florida. Yeah, you know, we'll get some pulses from these little tropical things, but you know, in between, it's it's good to have a little board like that. Well, yeah, you could do the eight, but then the eight is like where you have to take it out of the car and put it on the roof. The seven is like still fits in my Subi and it still has the float, you know. Yeah, and that's what I'm thinking with my my car as well. Like the seven L will still fit in there. It's another level of living. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I'm stoked. So basically, I'm heading back to Florida tomorrow. Oh, you are? Yeah. Just gonna what's cruise. your what's your route looking like? You're just out of here, straight peeling to Florida. Yeah, straight up ski. Margate City to Florida. Yep, to Vero Beach, Florida. So. And there's a little tropical thing out there. It looks like I saw I seen earlier. Yeah. On the Weather Channel. So. We well, this is going to be one of the most active hurricane seasons since 2015. Is that what they're saying? That's what they're claiming. Huh. Um, so this is this is something that I'm interested to get into. Um, so we've done a couple things together where you filmed surfing or we filmed a stupid interview or something or we did a podcast like now. <laughs> what um? Well, we've, we've come to the point where we might as well just sit still and just talk. <laughs> so here we are. So what? How did your how did your interest in film come about and like how did you start getting into it and and everything i know i've seen some of your footage i know for a fact i used some of your footage of new jersey legend dean randazzo surfing at manasquan inlet in i believe it was 1996 i used some of your footage in one of my nub videos way back but uh how'd you get into it well like i guess um I, it was innate you know my my grandfather on my mom's side was very uh into filmmaking cameras uh dad my dad was always had to rock in the camera at the parties but so, you know that was well, super eight that was just that cartridge so what was he shooting on your grandfather he was shooting on this the same exact camera that that zabruda guy filmed jf kennedy's assassination the same model i have it you have yeah, it it's in my archives wow dude because i collect them as well whether I know. i've used them or you're an archiver somebody brought them by like even the early digital ones the mavica the big floppy disk so for me um it just it, it clicked and then um, I found myself probably filming at like two, two, you know, two years old with my grandfather's camera. Wow. Or just holding it, you know. Yeah. Thinking, you know, you hear the spool moving, you know, but I never saw the footage, so <laughs> there probably wasn't any film in it. But it was just <laughs> that was my toy. And then over time, I became interested in films and um, you know different filmmakers. And then the revolution was these big VCR cameras. Oh yeah. You know. That, that was the footage with Dean. Like, that's what it was. It was a Sony. Was that your first Pro, camera that you kind of hit the ground running with? Yeah, Pro Edit, uh, you know, uh, RCA or, yeah, RCA, and it was great. You RCA know? what? Just the camera? It or... was just a Pro Edit RCA so, VHS size. Yeah. So I could patch it into two VCRs, and it was like, it, it had an editing system in it. Totally. But so it wasn't like with the knob. It was very, like, tedious. Yeah. You know? So you would fast forward and rewind with the knob. Yeah, and that two remotes, pause, play, like. Well, dude, I learned how to edit on VCRs too, because I came in, I came in with when they had digital eight. It wasn't even high eight yet, so I was popping right. them in with the auxiliary and editing tape to tape. Um, so like, tell me about your early video career, if you want to put it career. Did you, like were you making money to film serving or did passion project or yeah it was just passion because it filled a void in between you know swells or sessions yeah you know and as tedious it was with the two remotes and the two VCRs and you know that this and that it still was a process and it was cool yeah and you know you realized you need more B roll <laughs> right yeah always you know and, and and then you know when you show people the stuff like. Because it's not like I'm just filming one person. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, you're filming a group of people, 12, 15. And, totally. Or the person that's standing out that you don't even know. Yeah. Male or female, yeah. old or young. Um, just to have that clip. Yeah. So people are like, oh, you missed it. And it's like, I'm, I'm not doing this for, like, other than joy. <laughs> right? 
And first of all, I don't really pay attention to you. So it's like, <laughs> what did I really miss? You know? Oh, you're classic, dude. So it's, you know, it was just a passion. And, um, you know, sent me to here, there. And then, you know, as the cameras got smaller and digital, it became more accessible. Yeah, you know, totally. More feasible, you know. But so, I, also, I also do a lot of photography, surf photography. And that made me a better filmmaker because you're yeah. talking composition. Oh, dude. We're well, talking angles again, you know? I suck at f photos. I'm good at filming, but I can't take photos to save my life, dude. Right. It's, I mean, there's too many variables. It's a different animal, man. Yeah. You know, just being able to slow it down and, yeah. you know, make it look good. But, you know, it's a process. And, you, you know, just like anything else, you just keep working at it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it starts off shitty and then you get good at and it. I, th I do a couple things in Florida once in a while. Just show up at the camera, you know. But yeah. I really want to. I'd rather surf, you know? So it's like, that's what's kind of hard as a filmmaker. Like, you've been able to do both. Yeah. Because you bring the camera into the water. Well, you know. It, it would be impossible for me to stand on the beach and film surfing all day. I'd lose my mind, dude. Right. Especially at, like, a long point break right. Oh, yeah. Um. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot. Um. So this is something I was interested in that we used to talk about when I was a kid, and I forgot about it until right now. There is some connection. Is Taylor Steele like? What's the connection to Avalon and Taylor Steele? And what that country music girl? No, Taylor Steele. Taylor Steele, the the oh, surf Taylor, filmmaker. I thought you meant Taylor Swift. No. Oh. Well, is Taylor it, Swift's parents did have a house, or grandparents or uncles had a house in Stone Harbor. So do you remember but Taylor Steele's connection was, I believe, through um. Scott Sellens oh, and Scott's, Mikey Ternowski. Okay. Right? Mikey Ternowski's involved with Obey. I don't know. Right? Know and Dark name. Seas. Yeah. Right? Um, and Scott Sellens is like a cinematographer, filmmaker. Th okay. This is the reason I'm bringing it up. Because I remember when we were younger, when I was younger, you came, I came down to Florida one day and you were like, you got to get some footage, man. And I was like, what's this guy talking about? He's putting the press on me. And then you were like, dude, I'm getting a Bolex camera next hurricane season. I'm coming up to Jersey. We're filming Bolex for Taylor Steele's film. And I was like, what's this guy talking about? Stressing me out so bad. And you were like, you can't blow it. <laughs> so I don't know if you're messing with me. Or... Yeah, I, t I, t I probably was. Yeah. You know. But still. But I believe that that's the connection right there. You know, I know all those names. I know none of them. They're just people. Avalon boys. Yeah. And they're younger than me. But, um, you know, it's great that they're, you know, they're still in the industry. So, uh, kudos so those boys. Here's a, here's a question. Um, G Love. Is he from Avalon? His parents had a summer house in Avalon on uh, 9th Street. Yeah. And uh, he would, you know, as he got older, of course, he'd be there more. Um, but that was his connection. He would just love it, you know, surfing yeah. right down the street at that rock pile at 9th Street. Okay. Kind of down from your, where your grandmom lives. Like, he was yeah. just around the corner from that. Well, dude, now that I, like, remember looking at it, um, my grandmother lived right there, yeah. Because I mean, yeah, it right took me there. a while to figure out where she lived. Right there. But, dude, I spent so much of my childhood at her house there. Um, but we never surfed in Avalon, interestingly enough. Um, so where's Suncatcher? Suncatcher's up in Stone Harbor. Um, Seven Mile Island, island is made up of Avalon, which is the majority of the island, and then Stone Harbor, which is the southern part of the island. Yeah. And uh, Dave Markle's dad, um, Tom Markle, um, started Suncatcher. I believe he started in the early 80s. Okay. And uh, really on the island, that was the only place to go. Um, and he, but, you know, because depending on who was around, um, he had Michael Barron's in there. The first surf, custom surf where I ever got was an offshore Michael Barron. I don't, I've never even heard of that. Yeah, so I mean. What for, is it? It's just uh, Michael Barron was the shaper. Where are they from? I want to say Carlsbad. Okay. Right? Yeah. North County, at least. Uh-huh. And um, it was a top brand, you know, and then you had your hotlines, your. Uh, Hotline. Your, what, Gurney Collins, one. right? Bob Beach. Bob Virginia Beach. Beach. What's it called? Hotline Surfboards. Oh, I know Hotline. Right? Gurney, yeah. Gurney Collins was yeah. the main shaper. Maybe, oh, okay. You know, maybe he's still around. You know, but his boards were all over the place, like in the ESA years when the Slater duo was there. And was Slater on Hotlines? Slater was not on Hotlines. He was on Quiet Flights and Keckley's. And, oh yeah, uh, always Quiet Flight. You know, I so. saw. That's classic, dude. What about was there? Have you ever heard of the the board Sticky Hot Lips? I've never heard of that. It sounds more like a nickname. Because we because we had a st we had a board when we were kids that was called the Sticky Hot Lips, and I think it was from the seventies or something. It had like a big lip on it, and it was it was classic, dude. I um 
what, like a Rolling Stone? Yeah, kind of. Without looked, the tongue, just yeah, the lips? it looked like that. Yeah, um, that's freaky. Yeah, I should have kept it, man. Dude, I'm getting into, like, riding. I rode that 1985 board. Like, I brought it to the river. You saw that. And I rode it the other day at the point, And people love it, dude. It's so cool to, like, see how people respond to that. Right. You know what I mean? Um Mom, looks like we have uh, we have some some paparazzi here without the camera. We have some fans, <laughs> and and it looks like a small dog. That okay. yeah. <laughs> Hi, Cam. Apparently, yeah. actually, I'm a hologram. I tried to order them at Coors, they didn't come up. Well, you can order them right here. What do you mean? I well, went on Depot. Oh, okay. Ingram, 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 Oh, they dropped at 2 o'clock, not 12. They, yeah, 12. yeah. Are you coming in here? I don't think it's, I should come here. So he's like a medical. Uh, I probably shouldn't come here. Not, That's because she. Are you sick? No. Right. It's impossible to get it from asymptomatic people now. Well, they don't know that. They're debating that. The World Horse Health Organization. Where's your mask? I have it. Yeah, put it on. I don't want to get sick. No, <laughs> Well, we're filming, Mom. I know. Oh, look at June. She wants to see you for a minute. All right. Come on, June. With the Hannibal Lecter shade. Oh, it's Bean, dude. Come here, June. Right, right, June, come here. That's what Rob was saying. She went in the hospital with aspiration pneumonia. Oh, my God. She ate something off the ground. All right, guys. We're going to take a quick five-minute break, and we'll be back on air shortly. She, um... She ate corn that we were eating and it never digested it sat in her stomach. Uh oh. And it sat over her. Ladies and gentlemen, my mom, totally out of control. She told me, like, she was saying with a photo bomb. No, like, she dominates. She dominates. I know. We should have recorded that conversation. We got some good stuff from the beginning. It was tight. Uh, she's a great woman, dude. You're so fortunate. Yeah. She's awesome. And the two dogs? Did you see the dog like, go for my finger when I put the mic down? Yeah, we got the clip. Oh, my God. Classic. You know? Yeah, so my mom just showed up. Kind of got me thrown off, uh, thrown off schedule. <laughs> um... Yeah, so we were diving in. We were we were enriching ourselves in East Coast surfing history. We were just going at it. What, in your opinion, top three most legendary East Coast surfers? East Coast or just New Jersey? We can go Jersey and then East Coast, and then we'll go World because I want to broaden this. Right. The uh, you might have to talk into that closer. Yeah. Um, I would say. There you go. Yeah, I guess that helps. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> um, I would say, like, if, I mean, obviously, Dean Randazzo. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, Legend. And then I guess, you know, like, it's it, it's hard to say, you know? There's so many people that would be in the second, third, fourth, fifth, you know? Yeah, it's tough, dude. Um, And I can't just do it with my heart. I have to do it, like, with, you know? Yeah. I would say Scotty Durr has got to be in there, too. Scotty Durr. Manasquan. Yeah, right? I know who it is. Of course. He holds it down. He still holds it down. Yeah. And, um, ah, man, Ed Kane. Ed Kane? Ed Kane lived in Cape May back in the day. Never heard of him. But it's like, if we say the best surfers, like, are we talking like that dominated no, from no. like 15 years old to like still surfing today? Like, I'm saying most legendary. Yeah. I, so I like however the, your I like brain. Those, I like those three right there. All right. We got Dean Randazzo, Scotty Durr, and Ed Kane. Correct. I like it. Yeah, it's nice. Because, I mean, I'm, a, I'm not really in tune with the Groms nowadays. Yeah. I know there's this kid, Chaz. Well, it's like... Right? Moose is still, right? Moose is ripping. I'm um, not Chaz. <laughs> <laughs> his, his, his name is Cruz. Yeah, <laughs> oh, um, man, yeah right. Cruz Shred. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of... There's a bunch of kids coming up. And, dude, like, uh, proof's in the pudding. If you look over here, you don't really know what these kids are going to do until they're freaking in their mid-20s, you know? Right. Like... You could be ripping now, and dude, I I was I was not a blip on the radar from eighteen to twenty six years old, and then here I am now, you know. So, right. you, dude. Oh, and then wait a minute. Now, envelopes wide open. Now I'm thinking about surfers from Jersey. You know, yeah. there, there should be a. I, I should have at least said one woman. 
Okay, yeah. Right? I would say I think um, I know who you're gonna the go. girl in Wildwood Crest, what, Maddie Peterson? Oh, Maddie Peterson. Right? Okay. Yeah. Um, she's kind of an unknown. I mean, yeah. not an unknown. She's on the international level. Yeah. Um, she came from, like, Wildwood Crest. Like, I, I mean, in all the years I ever lived in Avalon, the only Wildwood Crest I surfed was that Trestles wave that's, like, over by the Coast Guard base. Yeah. You walk on. and Yeah. But I've I guess she was it. a little pure rat there. You know, while we crest. And, uh, yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't know much about her. I know that she was on the U.S. surf team, though. Yeah, I think she got a medal. She medaled at one of the ISAs. Dude, I medaled. Yeah, you did medal. That's pretty heavy. I know. Um, You brought back some heavy memories. Right. Dude, what about Linda DeVoli? You know what? She, it, it, that name was in my, like, I just couldn't remember how to pronounce it. So yeah. So I kind of missed past, like, I went past it. So she won a, a world tour event. Linda DeVoli. Yeah. Where was it at? Do you remember? <sighs> I think it was in Australia. She was f- top five. And I think when they say top five, that means fifth. Right. Or she was top three in the world. That's pretty impressive. I didn't realize that was her. I didn't realize she turned pro. I don't know if you ever turned pro back then, but. Yeah, but yeah. Because. She was on. She was ranked on. Should we look it up? I mean, you can ask Siri. I might need the stats. I don't ask Siri. Well, you don't want to ask Siri anything. Cause well, she's, if once she's on, she's always listening. <laughs> and all you got to do is say one thing, like Ford, and you'll get a you know, some sort of email or suggestion to go to Ford dot com. And um, <laughs> are you gonna buy a Ford right now? I'm not. Now there's gonna be a Ford commercial on this. I know. Let's we, get a Subaru commercial on this. Dude. Yeah. Oh I have yeah. A yeah. Signature. Yeah. Subaru. I didn't even think about that. You got the <laughs> Subaru out there. So yeah, Subarus aren't bad. And there's one right down the street of me in Vero Beach. So. <laughs> um. Um, so while, while I'm looking this up, give us your, uh, top three most legendary East coast surfers. Oh man. Again, I have to put Randazzo in there. I love it, dude. Right. Yeah. And of course, what Bobby Slater, Bobby, I forget that he's from the East coast. Take him out of the equation. Okay. Uh, what sans Slater? <laughs> um, I would say, I mean, damn, there's so much David Spear. Oh my God! I right? found it. Yeah, David Spear. I'm not going to interrupt. And then, I mean, why I'm in that area, you know, and no offense to anyone watching or questioning, I'm just, I would say Matt Keckley. Keck, because he pretty much opened the door for a lot of those Florida guys. Yeah, Keck was like the originator. He was something in the air game. Was he one of the first people doing airs, at least on the East Coast, right? Well, I guess John Holman will take credit for you know yeah. being a you know an air guy, but I'm, I think Keckley was right there with him. He had those Keck yeah. airs. You know, Can't like how the dolphins do? Yeah. Right? Classic, dude. And he was just on point. You know, those layback snaps. And so we, we, met, went, we mentioned his tube riding capability and the guy's top notch. So, yeah, he's in the three. All right, you ready for this? This is heavy shit, man. Linda DeVoli, regular foot surfer from Brigantine, New Jersey, world ranked number three in 1980, described by Surfer Magazine as very possibly the finest woman's surfer in the world. Wow. I had no clue. That. I, but I only have no clue because as far as surfing publications, I guess I was more like 82, 83. Yeah. As far that's as that freaking goes. gnarly, dude. But that, that wow. You know? Mind blowing. New Jersey, man. Brigantine. Right here. Wow. Amazing. Um, so off the top of your head, do you remember Dean's highest rank on the world tour? Because we were kind of forgetting to mention that the folks at home that might not know who Dean Randazzo is or know much about him, he is the only New Jersey server in history to qualify for the World Championship Tour. Same tour as Slater, same tour as all the greats. Yeah, I want to say, I mean, I forget how many people qualified back then. 44. Was it 44? Yeah. And then they would have 48, obviously, to make yeah. the, the rounds fit. I would say Randazzer probably finished, like, in, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just speculating. In the mid-30s, I don't, you know. I, yeah. I know he did better at the QS level. So um, I think I said this on the podcast before, but I watched because I was doing I was doing the QS in 2009. I watched Dean Randazzo take out Dane Reynolds at Steamer Lane in a man-on-man heat quarterfinal. I mean that's that's just what Dean you know Dean was. He was capable, you know, being fortunate to have him in the local ESA here, South Jersey ESA, um, was great. And um, Dean was just pure uh, raw talent, tons of energy, very innovative. Yeah, and uh, he parlayed that into a you know a a, a career, um, and uh, you know from my understanding he's still in the mix up here too, right? Oh yeah, you, he's, uh, a, he's around, dude. He's on your squad for the uh, board riders when okay. you guys were doing those contests, right? So he finished thirtieth. Okay, pretty good, dude. You know, hey, 
Can uh, never, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He can't take it away from me. He's a survivor <laughs> on top of it. You That's know, gnarly. Yeah, he survived cancer four times. Amazing. All right. Are you ready? Hags official drop. Top three most legendary surfers in history. Or what around the world? Yeah. What, do, do they have to be pro surfers? Or no, just people they, that are just in the people eye? that you think are legendary personally. Do Kuanamoku. Okay, bang. We knew right? that. Yeah, for sure. Um, Tom Kern. And uh, Butch Van Archdale. <laughs> right. Never heard of him. We'll watch the first Endless Summer. Okay, I will. You see the footwork? All right, Butchie. You know? Dude. What do you think about this? Do you want to come on board for the project? I'm gonna to try to get it. I'm gonna to try to get it picked up by uh, Dana Brown, Bruce Brown's son. Endless Summer Three. Me on my eight foot soft top and Mason Ho. Oh wow! <laughs> Let's do it. And you've done things with Mason, so it's. We like, need funding, dude. We need to do it. Well, well, how much funding are we talking? I don't know. We just need. We really just need. Well, Dana, you need volunteers. We need Dana Brown's blessing or volunteers. Because imagine Endless Summer Three, dude. Maybe sick. I thought for some reason I thought that was already con- concept conceptualized. Uh, yeah, that's the word. <laughs> yeah, you know? they were gonna do North Shore too. I heard that. Yeah, dude. But would it follow the same story, or do you think it would be like a remake of modern day with that same story? Oh, they should just follow it. I know, but like, where's Rick Kane? Rick Kane, dude. Yeah. I'm friends with Rick Kane. And Turtle, you know, too, right? I'm friends with Turtle. <laughs> that's cool. you, wait, I saw you in that one vlog. We're legends, dude. Didn't, weren't you, like, bidding, outbidding him for yeah, something? No, we. Ju- I, I was bidding with him. We tried to win the Kelly Slater Surf Ranch, and um, we we bid up to 14 grand. Um, we were at, at a cancer fundraiser, so they, they raffled off a day at the Surf Ranch. We went up to 14 grand, and Turtle whispers in my ear that he doesn't have the money. Huh. He was just messing around. Well, I mean, there's certain <laughs> things you mess around with. You don't mess around with m- not having money at an auction <laughs> when you're raising your hand. But I, th- dude, so we went up to 14 and I pulled the plug. Anyway, I should have just kept going. The the guys that won, they they got a day at the surf ranch for 18 grand, dude. Wow. Picture that. A day. A day. Because otherwise, people just rent it hour to hour. Well, they rent it for a day, but it's 50. That's not bad. 50,000. So dollars, right? But getting back to Dana Brown, like what? How how do you believe would be anything possibly watchable for Endless Summer Three? Like how would it be? Would it be like a a spoofy, funny? Would it just be documentary style? Would it be geared to how you do your videos? It would be would it just be a long version of no, one of your vids. It would be vlogs. Classic editing, just like Endless Summer and Endless Summer Two. The thing I love about those movies is the way that Bruce Brown, rest in peace. Yeah, great, great legend. Thank he you. did the commentary so good. So the surfers didn't really have dialogue, you right, know? Right, right, right. It was all about the filmmakers seeing it from the outside, and he would be like, you know, I remember there's a classic line. He's like, um, when Pat, it's in Endless Summer 2, he's like, when Pat has too much energy, he'll skip up and down the beach for an hour or two. I don't know right. if you remember no, that. No, and then they fast forward it. Yeah. You know, I mean, they make it the speed faster, so yeah. it looks goofier, which is what they did in the first one, which, you know, with the, the, the cameras they used in 1960, I mean, that's that's wild, you know? Yeah. Um, oh, but were... it would still it would still be the travel, right? The, yeah. In the summer three, well, there, would, it there would... would be the, you know. That's what you do. You go. The you... prankster, dude, you know? But who would you go visit or, like, who would you want to run into on the road? I mean, Mason's got countless people in his contact list. Yeah. So, You've got countless people in your contact list. Like, so how would you keep it just from being, like, the Beatles and stuff? You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, girls running down the street screaming, you know, like. <laughs> like No, yeah, see, that's the thing. It's Endless Summer 3. It's a different era. You're seeing a different, you're seeing a different side of surfing because, I mean, 1960 is one thing, and then the 90s when they did Endless Summer 2 is another thing, and then we're coming up on 30 years. But would it be like a documentary style? Yeah. Right. Same idea. It's right. It's yeah. the same thing. I wanted, It would be classic. Right. More classic. So how does this move forward? Like what Like what? What entails to make... <laughs> I don't know. This is the first time I ever mentioned it out loud. Oh, wow. Otherwise, it was just written down on a notepad, but I right. figured you're well, the Well, maybe guy. some of your uh, viewers might have some suggestions for the comment box. Yeah, you right? can tell them. Comment down below, guys. You know, keep it clean, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and thank yeah. you always, you know, for logging in, vlogging in. Like, this is a great, you know, I appreciate you, you know, 
giving me a chance to sit here on the mic. It's fun, isn't it? You mentioned it last night, and I was like a kid in a candy store. I was like, hee hee hee. You got know? stoked. I got super stoked. You didn't get scared? No, I was like, man. Some people get scared. Yeah. You were you were just frothing at the lips for no, this I was just like, this is killer. I was like, I remember seeing Ryan, and the, I guess you did another. You've only done a few, right? A handful so far? I'm a, this is my 20th episode. Oh, of, of this? Yeah, but. But, when um, Ryan, but Ryan was like, what number was he? Two. Yeah, so that or he, one, he was one. Yeah, so he'd been ramping it up. Yeah, recently. Yeah. Okay. This is the new. This is the new median. What do they call it? Medium. This is the new medium. But it's the new form of media. Yeah. Oh, people or love mixed it. Mixed media. Yeah. Right. So anyway, I'm stoked to be here. Yeah. Thank you so much. What uh? You know. What, is there anything just burn? Any burning desire that you want to share? Not really, but it's just you know. Um, I'm just wondering about like, what's the call tomorrow morning? What are you thinking? You want to catch some waves? Yeah, I got a window. You have your seven, your yep. seven foot soft top, and I have a couple other boards in there, just dying, well, dying to get in the water. I mean, it's gonna be oh my god! It's three to four feet fresh on shore right now. It seems like there's a front. Or Friday something. morning, we have some nice north wind. Oh, four feet at six from the south. We're gonna score in the morning. Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, so that's what that's what I'm itching about. Like, and I know you have all these little spots. Oh uh, yeah, there's these a little, one these little nook. <clears throat> there's a one foot at eleven in the water tomorrow. See the rogue. See people don't even pay attention to those one foot at elevens. Um, uh uh-uh. uh. Water's cold up here though, huh? I jumped in the other day. It was not too warm. Um. Well, here's the thing. It's been blowing offshore a lot, and we've been getting a lot of south swells, so it keeps the water freezing. Yeah, dude. that that upwelling, right? That yeah. upwelling doesn't help anyone. No, it's you know? it's pretty gnarly. I I jumped in today, and I was like, oh man, it's still cold. Right. Um. Like I was more stoked to have a full suit up here than I've ever been to like surf cold winter Florida. Yeah. And it's not even that cold. Oh no. It's just like it's you guys, weird. You guys you know? are living it, dude. January what? Like, so you guys have what six days of winter? I think it's like from January fourth to the tenth, maybe. Well, or it's just like over like three months of winter. Like you have these hours where you can <laughs> rock like UGGs or a, a, a lid. It's like five. You, know, you can see your breath, and it's like it's big. It's big. Five thirty to six fifteen on February fourteenth. Right in the morning, and then the next day might be another hour longer. Yeah. So then you can, you know, oh, well, I can rock this. <laughs> I can wear pants. <laughs> you know? So funny, dude. Um, but then you come up here and it's 60 degrees and you're freezing your butt off. Yeah, it's a different world, dude. Yeah. It is. Surfing, too, yeah. dude. And when the ocean's chilly like this, I mean, it's just, it's even, it's damper in the air. and Yeah. Um, I dude, thought I'd be, like, trunking it by now. The, uh, I mean, yeah, like, last week you could when it was all onshore wind. It's and, crazy. You know, it brings the warm water in. But, um, dude, the whole thing, like when I'm down in Florida and I come back in the wintertime and I have to strap on the 5'4, it's gnarly, dude. I know. You're so stiff. Right. It's the craziest sensation. But wetsuits have gotten so much better as far as being, you know, f- more flexible, more comfortable. You know, the technology has been great. And, you know, I know what you ride uh, the Hyperflex. Yeah. And uh, they've been doing really great things too with their product. Oh, they're awesome. They um yeah we dropped a neoprene free wetsuit this year. Yeah, I thought I saw that. The right? Greenprene. Right. Pretty yeah. wild, dude. And that's like a it's an re- algae or something. It's or? recycled plastic water bottles and clamshells. And clamshells? Yeah, clamshells, dude. Like how do oyster shells? Sorry, but how do oyster they, shells? The process must be incredible. I don't know. Hmm. They had me in the warehouse just smashing oyster shells with a hammer, but other nope. than that, I don't know anything about it. No, no pearls. <laughs> No pearls. You never know. Um, dude, so let's talk about, like, say you were friends with Dean way back in the 80s, let's say. Yeah, I met him at a, a party of this band called In the Red was playing at, like, 55th Street in Ocean City. Nice. Maybe 50th Street. I don't know what the... What's the street that leaves town up there? Whatever uh, street, maybe, right? Something yeah, like that, right? Yeah, it's, it's, so anyway... Oh, 34th Street. Right. So I get out of the car, and um, I'm with Terry Hughes and a, um, a couple other people from Avalon. And uh, he's like, hey, brother, he walks up to Dean. He's like, I want to meet you if you were my friends. And Dean hops out of his car, like, all, like, dusted himself off, like, you know, <laughs> fixing the tie that's not there. No. Anyway, <laughs> introduced, and he's like, oh, you guys coming in? You know, yada, yada, yeah. So, boom, there we go. And then uh, in what, what year was that, you think? 
uh, I want to say it was like summer of 1983 or 84. Okay, so 83. Um was Dean Rendazzo surfing 365 days a year in New Jersey? I don't know if I have the answer to that question, but I would have to say probably not because there wasn't really waves here 365 yeah. days a year. Well, and Dean was going to mainland high. Yeah. Mainland Mustangs, right? He was on their surf team. So, yes, he had the ability to surf when he needed to, and I'm what, sure he was a pure rat. Was he surfing in January? Yes. And February. Yes. Coldest months. Yes. Yeah. Full going for it. Right. But then Dean got to a point in his teenage years where he was in California. Yeah. For a few months. Or he was in San Diego or something. Right. Or he was in, but even as a, a, you know, a teenager. Yeah. You know, or he was in Hawaii for an extended trip. Like Dean was legit, you know. Yeah, totally. At a young age. See, I I find it fascinating to know that 30, 40 years ago, uh, there's New Jersey surfers that were shredding in January and February. Because that's like our deal. You know, well, yeah, big I mean, winter storms. It, you know, and growing up in Avalon, I mean, the same thing. I mean, you surfed year round. Yeah. You know, you, you didn't see any reason not to. Yeah, totally. Um, first of all, you ran the beach because no one was around. The crowds were usually light. Yeah. Um, in and January, the surf for was sure. Pumping, you know, but <clears throat> there was a process getting out of the wetsuit, you know, do I change out and get into yeah. a, a, a car that's warmed up? <sighs> Or do I just put a towel down and say, I want to figure this out in the hot shower at home. But I roll straight back home. Yeah, but you can't use a hot shower because you're just clawed. Yeah. So you kind of have to ease, <laughs> ease into so it. So what about, all right, here's another good one to think about. Okay, 30 years ago, what was the... So we're like, talking 1990, 30 years ago? Or I'm, okay, I'm talking 80, 40 years ago. Yeah, let's so, go 40. Right, um, so we'll say 1980. Yeah, or let's go 85, 35 right, years ago. Right, when pro surfing really you were, sunk it, its teeth. It was going on. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. okay, I film every day. Right. So what was the film load back then? Like, how much did you film? In what, 1985? Yeah. Nothing. Okay. So f- fast forward to 1995, how much were you filming? A lot. Daily? Yeah. Twice a week? Three times a week? If I was in California, three, four times a week. Yeah. Five times a week. Um, if it was Avalon, you know, maybe seven days a week if the hurricanes were good. Yeah. But I tried to get be- the best of both worlds. Like, I wanted to surf, too. Yeah. But, totally. if, you know, if such and such was in town, you know, or let's go get some stock footage. Because I just, like I said, like with the two VCRs and stuff like me, like that kept me creative. Yeah. Even though it was fu- functionally dis- dysfunctional. <laughs> right? <laughs> totally. <laughs> so, what, all right, so what's like in your mind, what's the most legendary thing you captured on film before the year 2000? Uh, it was Roger Jeffrey in John Townsend's Inlet, which is between Townsend's, uh, what do you call it? Seattle City and Avalon. And you, you claimed it was the longest wave you've ever seen surf? I th- yeah, I think it was Hurricane Aguardo. And I, I, I believe he sent you the clip, right? He sent me the clip. It's on YouTube somewhere. It's yeah. an edit. Yeah. He, he Shout out great, Roger Jeffries, dude. Good stuff, Roger. You. You know, he's one of those guys that just popped up out of nowhere with my friend Mike McFarlane. Um, they were stuck in Hatteras, I guess, after the uh, Vought Beach. Yeah, totally, right? totally. Everyone rallied down there. Yeah. You know, Jason Reagan and yeah. a couple other guys from Cal that were, you know, at Roger's camp. So they just showed up like eleven o'clock one night, and they're they're like, "Man, it's it's pumping in Hatteras." You know, I go, well, "You guys, tomorrow's going to be unbelievable." And what was weird is the Army Corps of Engineers just got done like digging, yeah. like dredging Doing out certain, dredge, and, yeah. yeah, and they dredged so close to the rock pile that it just created this sandbank. That's crazy, man. And you could see where that elbow was, where you know. Well, there's still a peak. So there. it was a forty-five second ride that Roger had. Um, there was a charter boat that went out in the inlet, and Roger, you know, he just was jamming on it. Dude, it's sick, man. So um, you guys so, were novelty so for, hunting yes. way back. So for me, that 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 was a wave that really, you know, I, it's always going to be etched in my mind. And, you know, yeah. I'm sure Roger's going to, you know, com- comment away, Roger, you're the man, you know. And Roger's yeah. still making it happen. He's out there, uh-huh. uh, you know, the king of Grandview. Yeah. You know? Killer, dude. Yeah. I love it. Is that Lucadia or Encinitas or something? That's right? cool, man. So, yeah, so I surf that inlet now, but, you know, the waves just break on rocks now. There's no, there's no sandbag. Yeah, but somebody told me they saw you out a little bit further out during yeah. the winter. You went to Avalon, right? I've surfed in the middle of the inlet. But that wasn't the wave that I'm talking about. No, you that were was talking jetty about to jetty. off the jetty, full running. To the next jetty. Which is nuts, dude. It's nuts. That's nuts. You know? That's crazy. And it was just like one of those sessions. And technically, they, they weren't supposed to surf that day. I mean, you're not allowed to surf on that side of the rocks. Yeah. Whether the lifeguards are there or not. Yeah. So the lifeguards got got a sniff of wind of it. So they came down. And unfortunately, while I'm filming, you know, the lifeguards trying to blow these guys out. 
you know, in, in my, you know, sarcastic Jersey way, I was like, you know, dude, don't be a loser. You know, I didn't cur- I didn't say F for nothing like that. I just said straight up, don't be a loser. Let these guys surf. Yeah. You know, the, you know, the Avalon lifeguard show up. Boom. I'm getting yelled at. I got a ticket. You got a ticket? You're like disruptive, being disruptive <laughs> at the beach. You're a disruptive guy, You dude. know, it was called misconduct on the beach, and that's what that video was called. Oh, yeah. Sesh. How much was the ticket? 1985? Uh, no, it was oh, 1995. Oh, we're 95. 95 now. Well, 96, how, actually. How much was the ticket? Uh, it was probably like 60 bucks. Back and then, I, that was like $15,000 back and then. I think I still have a copy of the, I still have the original <laughs> ticket. Good. Yeah. You're an archiver, dude. Archiver. You have a lot of archives. Not as much as I did because I've been sifting. But you have some stuff. You have some interviews and some pictures and stuff. Oh, of oh me yeah, from yeah. The the vi- oh, yeah. Those, uh, yeah, yeah. That, and you have one other thing I noticed about you is, dude, I gave you a beat up super brand board and you brought that thing back to life. Took the stickers off, cleaned it, no wax. You fixed the dings. It looks like it's a brand new board. It's incredible. Yeah. And that board's so seasoned. It's so broken in. <laughs> dude, it's got like no flex left. I don't think there was ever flex in it, you know? <laughs> By the way, we have to give the honorable mention to Brian Brown, you know? Yeah, and that's the Avalon Roots there, too. Yup, super brand. I remember when he was shaping double surfboards, Mikey C was riding them. Mikey C now works at uh, um, Stab Mag. Um, so yeah, because Brian was shaping out of your Aunt Karen's. And he shaped out of my aunt's <laughs> barn, dude. When we, right? when we had the, the mini ramp in the barn, and the boys would be over there fucking shit up, and he would be in there, like, just trying to shape. Right. <laughs> and we'd be over there getting wasted, breaking shit. Right. And now he's my guy at Superbrand. That's unreal. As the world turns, Hags. Right. Was that where that... that- the TV show was filmed with Paris Hilton and that Nicole Richie. <laughs> no, okay. that's at my house. Oh, classic. Yep, classic throwback. A, a lot of these guys already know, though. I was on The Simple Life when I was a kid. Well, technically one episode. It's not like you were like a weekly feature. Nah, I was a one-time feature. Yeah. They had to move on. But that was epic. Yeah, it was classic. You know, that's what fucked my head up. How did you figure? Like, how did you pull that one off? They, the producers went to Heritage, of all places, in Margate, and they said, who would be the most interesting family to have Paris stay at their house? And they said us. That's awesome. Naturally, because Hob is part of our family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he's one of a kind. He's a work. Great guy. I love you, Hob. Legend. Um. All right. People of Earth. Hags, how was it? Great. You know, it flowed. You want to give your thank yous? What, you got to say anything? You know? Yeah, I just want to, you know, first of all, thank you for the opportunity. No worries. Dude. You know, Bob Marley um, live. Thank, you know, the fact that we have an opportunity, you know, to, to age gracefully and still have a sport of surfing, like in our, our DNA and our, our daily life, you know, and um, it's, a good it's, thing. it's a great and, you know, the, com, you know, the camaraderie, <laughs> you know, like people you meet and here oh, they yeah. are, boom, boom, boom. So, you know, I want to just thank the process, you know? Yeah. I like that, dude. Life's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And you just go with it. And, um. You know, um, and I want to just thank, uh, the, you know, for being up here, having the opportunity to slip out of Florida for a little bit. Yeah, it's good. And we're going to surf tomorrow morning. So look yeah. forward to that on the vlog, guys. Excellent. Hags on his new seven foot soft top shredding. Well, there's like a learning curve on that board. Yeah. Well, soft topping's different than fiberglass, yeah. dude. I tell everybody that. Dig it. You got to get used to those those big fat rails. But um, this has been the Fully Nuking Podcast, I believe, episode 20. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. A little bit of surf history here with a longtime family friend, Big Hags. And uh, we're out. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment below. Thanks, guys. You. Mm-hmm.